welcome back to another Mafia Romance Monday video and today I'm talking about all of my favourite Mafia romances that I've read in the first half of this year. And I'm going to kick straight off with Hands by S.J. Tilly which is book four in the Alliance series. Now I've actually got a copy of this book here and this is one of the limited edition copies that I got from S.J. Tilly and it's signed in the front there so very very happy to have this copy. So I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed this series as a whole and would thoroughly recommend it but I read Hands in January and therefore kind of qualifies for this video. So in this one we are following Hands obviously of the namesake of this book and also Cassandra. Now we saw Hans in the first three books and we thought he was going to be kind of a baddie, we thought he was going to be the villain. But actually we figured out pretty quickly that in fact he is a goodie. He has been trying to take down this kind of sex trafficking ring um, and um, you know spends his whole life dedicated to taking out the bad guys. By the time we get to book four we know that Hans is kind of this lone assassin if you like. Uh, like I said, his reason to be is tracking down these bad, bad guys um, and he very much keeps to himself. In fact, he has this house like in this cul-de-sac street and he owns most of the properties and he's trying to buy them all up basically so he doesn't have to deal with any neighbours. However, when he's away on a job, his uh, very elderly neighbour um, passes away and before he gets back and can buy the property for himself it's actually sold to a lady called Cassandra and so she becomes his new neighbour now she is a much younger woman very very attractive and he is um, uh, startled when he first comes home from his uh, from this job where he's been away for a number of weeks um, and she sees that he's back and she nips across the road to introduce herself and be a really good neighbour. Hans is very taken aback, he's um, you know very thrown by this encounter because normally he would be very stealthy um, and she kind of creeps up on him as it were um, but they both have a very instant attraction to one another however Hans doesn't want anything to do with Cassandra. He really doesn't want to get involved, even though he really, really kind of instantly takes a shine to her. And so from that day on, he deliberately uh, makes sure that he completely stays away from her, that he avoids her at all costs. He waits till she's out before he comes home. Um, he waits till she's asleep before he comes out, that sort of thing. But Cassandra is also very, very taken with hands and she really wants to try and get his attention and um, wants to be a very good neighbour. And she's also a bit of an amateur baker. She absolutely loves baking. She's terrible at it, absolutely terrible at it, but she loves baking. And so when she bakes lots of these goodies, she then will leave him these baked goods on his doorstep. And then Hans has this thing where even though they're really, really awful and he can hardly eat them, they're so terrible, he cannot bring himself to throw her food away and he forces them down and then will return like the empty container back onto her doorstep um, and um, so she keeps feeding him, he keeps eating it and they have this very very kind of then strange kind of relationship where they never see each other but he, she's constantly baking for hands. Of course he becomes obsessed with her and so is really keeping a watching eye on her making sure that she's okay um, and when she gets herself into danger hands does not hesitate to step in and rescue her and and then of course that basically means that they're in contact with each other and she starts to uncover a little bit more about who Hans is the person, what he does for a living um, and their kind of relationship goes from there. But I absolutely love this one, Hans is totally obsessed, crazy in love with this woman um, and it's really really sweet and cute and um, I really really thoroughly enjoyed it um, and would highly recommend. Then I want to recommend The Tallest Tower by Amelia Finn and this is book one in her new uh, mafia series the underbelly enchanted series um and in this one we're following felix and christabel so this is a bit of a spin-off mafia series from amelia finn's May justice series in that one we are very much aware of the main character in this one felix because his brother is actually a police officer who's in the May justice series um, but Felix is kind of like head of his mafia organisation. His father has passed away and now he's basically in charge of this mafia organisation. He is the stereotypical mafia hero. He's cold, calculating, very, very ambitious and he's not particularly charitable, shall we say. What I will say about this one, this book, it actually starts quite horrifically. We get a uh, flash from the past 
um, that shares a very, very uh, tragic and um, horrible story about uh, Felix's father, just what kind of man, how cruel this person was. And essentially the clean version of this story is that he would um, get women pregnant and then dispose of them after the baby is born. And he's essentially been kind of like looking to breed a army of very, very strong heirs. Um, and now Felix is, like I say, is the eldest of these, but there's kind of like um, five uh, brothers in total. Um, and um, yeah, they've all been very mistreated by their fathers, but also none of them really have ever known who their mothers were um, and their mothers have long since passed away. So like I say, it starts, this book starts out very uh, tragically, very horrifically, but if you can get past the first couple of uh, chapters, then um, it settles down and gets very, very interesting. Um, and like I say, Felix is now in charge, his, uh, his father is gone, um, but there is a lady called Christabel who is essentially a journalist and she is uh, trying to dig up dirt on him and his family, trying to figure out what happened to these women, um, who their mothers are, and um, she starts writing about him in the paper and of course he needs to make sure that she keeps her mouth shut and doesn't uh, share any more um, bad stories about him in the press because yes he is in, in the mafia but he also has some legitimate businesses as well and obviously he doesn't particularly want everyone to know that he is a mafia boss even though everyone knows it but he doesn't particularly want it out in the public domain. And so he makes a decision that he's going to kidnap Christabel, take her back to his house um, but then once he's done that, he realises his mistake, really, because he's like, I don't know why I've done this, because I don't know what I'm going to do with her, and now I've just kind of made things worse. Um, but not only that, it turns out that Christabel is diabetic, and she doesn't tell him because she perceives it as a weakness. But of course, because she doesn't tell him, that means she doesn't get the right food. Her blood sugar goes all over the place, and she becomes very, very sick. And then he has to call in his sister-in-law from the Mayor Justice Service to come and help, because he can't take her to the hospital, but he needs her to have medical assistance. Um, and of course... Um, his sister-in-law is not going to be too happy about what he's doing um, but will also make sure that she definitely helps Christabel out um, and somewhere in the mix of all of this they um, you know develop feelings for each other and their romance goes from there so I really really in did enjoy this first installment um, and would recommend the series so far there's just two books out so far but a third one is on the way so the next one then that I absolutely loved was When She Unravels by Gabrielle Sands and this is book one in the Fallen series. Now, I've not read any more in this series, just this first one, but I absolutely loved it and definitely interested in reading more and we'll get to them as soon as I absolutely can. Now, this is an Italian mafia romance. Um, it's also a hidden identity, a workplace romance and a bit of an age gap. And we're following Damiano and Valentina. Now, Valentina is um, a mafia princess. She is based in New York and she is basically married off as an arranged marriage to one of her father's um, enforcers. Um, and he is a very, very horrible and violent man and he makes her do some terrible things. In fact, he makes her go down to the basement with him and torture his victims and she is very, very traumatised and scarred by this whole experience. Um, doesn't feel that her family can help her. her. father definitely isn't interested in helping her and kind of becomes a shell of the woman that she used to be and avoids all social contact um, and is just really, really struggling to kind of come to terms with her new life. It all comes to a bit of a head when her husband brings home a woman uh, down into the basement to be tortured and this is enough he's definitely crossed the line in this time and she refuses to torture um a, an innocent woman because seemingly there's absolutely no reason why this woman is even down there and so um valentina decides that she is going to uh, say enough is enough shoots her husband and then helps this woman escape and she escapes with her and they basically get on a plane to europe and uh, valentina eventually finds herself in Ibiza. Now she is then looking for work in Ibiza so that she's got some money um, and um, she ends up going to this uh, nightclub um, and asking for a job at this nightclub and who should own this nightclub but Damiano. 
he's actually a mafia heir himself he runs uh, and owns the island essentially of ibiza and all of the clubs sort of in town um and so when she goes to him um for a job he's very suspicious of her he doesn't actually know who she is but he's very suspicious that she's not who she says she is um, and also thinks that she looks too uh, pretty too well kept um, you know her fingernails are perfect all of that sort of stuff and he doesn't think that she could possibly be a worker um, and therefore maybe he thinks she's a rich uh, girl looking for a bit of fun in the summer and um, is trying to prove something to her parents or something anyway he very reluctantly gives her a cleaning job and uh, deliberately also makes her life a living hell for the first week because he's really really testing her resolve and of course she's absolutely desperate so she does everything he says works really really hard and kind of really impresses him but of course he's still very suspicious of her realizes um, still that something is not quite right about this whole situation but still he's very attracted to her she's attracted to him they kind of start a relationship um, and then things are really gonna um, start to unravel uh, literally when he realizes who she actually is and she realizes that he's part of the mafia um, and you know scared that her past is gonna catch up with her so like i said i really really enjoyed this met some interesting characters that are very are definitely set up um, some of the other books in the series and we'll definitely go on to read more the next one then is ruthless savage by lillian harris i actually got this originally as an arc i'm part of lillian harris's art team and it came out in may this is an irish mafia romance it's an age gap a bodyguard also an ex-con and it's book one in the savage king series so this is her newest um mafia series that she started to write and it's a spin-off from the Rosina crime family which is the previous series that she wrote so in the Rosina crime family we are following the italian mafia and in this one um we are now following the irish mafia but in the same kind of universe and in this particular one we're following eru and devlin so devlin is eru's essentially bodyguard and he's been her bodyguard since she was a little girl so there's a big quite a big age gap here but eru has always really really liked devlin has always had a crush on him um, and in a previous book, so basically in one of the Mazina crime family books, he ends up going to prison um, and she um, basically writes him letters while he's in prison and attempts to go and see him once a week, although he always um, refuses to see her because he doesn't want her coming to you know prison and seeing him in a place like that and one day Eru turns up on a day that she doesn't normally turn up making Devlin think there's something seriously wrong and um, but she's done it to trick him into meeting up with her and he then says look you need to stop coming there can never be anything between us um, and so Eru kind of goes off with her tail between her legs and kind of attempts to forget about him in the course of some of the other books as well she ends up getting kidnapped she needs to be rescued Devlin ends up coming out of prison um, and at the start of this book, he is now back to being her bodyguard um, as she goes off to college. Of course, she's going to do everything she can to try and, um, you know, entice him into being with her. But he's absolutely adamant this is, isn't going to happen. Meanwhile, her dad is now trying to arrange her in marriage to somebody else. She really doesn't like this person, doesn't want to marry him. And um, this guy is marrying her because... Um, he wants to uh, not only obviously merge with uh, this uh, very influential mafia irish mafia family but also he's very interested in the fact that she is a virgin and kind of threatens her on a number of occasions to remain a virgin until they get married and so this gives her a spark of an idea that she is going to lose her virginity and that will basically put him off marrying her and then she'll be free to uh, continue to pursue devlin so because devlin is not um you know falling for her charms shall we say she then decides she's going to go to a sex club and put herself up for auction apart from this sex club is owned by the russian mafia so she's getting herself into quite some hot water and when devlin figures out what's going on he obviously has to get in there to try and rescue her once more he's going to get himself into a lot of trouble with the russian mafia but also um, there's going to be severe consequences for them as a couple as well and for what's going to go on with this um, supposed arranged marriage. So lots going on here but I really really enjoyed this one. Devlin was the um, a brilliant sort of tortured hero, someone who really wanted to be with her but felt that he was not good enough for her and was trying to do the right thing by her um, and Aerie was just not going to take no for an answer but um, ultimately you know it was great to figure out how they were going to get through everything and end up with their own HEA. I will point out that there's lots of ridiculous things that happen in here like it's 
mistaken, not necessarily mistaken identity, but hidden identities, where he goes to the club with her, but he's wearing a mask, so she doesn't recognise him, that sort of stuff, um, which is obviously ridiculous, but I was willing to overlook it because I enjoyed it so much and their relationship, and um, yeah, really enjoyed the first book in this new series. Then I want to recommend this next one, Darkest Sins by Never Altage. This is book nine in the Perfectly Imperfect series. There's only going to be 10 in this series, one more to come out and spin-off is starting um, very soon, so very excited about that. I've absolutely loved everything I've read by Never Altage so far. Recommend this whole series and if you start from the beginning, um, the first book is good, um, but they continue to get better and better and better as the series has gone on and every book I've re read from her I vowed it's my favourite book of the series and this one was no different I absolutely loved it so this is also a hidden identity romance there's a stalker element to it a very damaged hero the hero is an assassin there's an age gap a secret baby and also caretaking in here so quite a lot of different tropes in this one and we're following Nera and Kai so Kai is our assassin we've seen him in some other books um and um we know he was picked up by a secret kind of military organization when he was just a baby well a young boy should we say not an actual baby but a very young boy and he's literally been trained to be emotionless cruel violent and trained to be the perfect assassin and he never misses his mark Nera, meanwhile is a mafia princess and she um is you know put she knows she's gonna have to be arranged in marriage at some point but she's putting it off as long as she can and she's training to be a vet and she happens to kind of like help out this um like this animal shelter in the city so one day kai is on a job he actually gets shot um, and he's injured and she sees this man kind of collapsed in an alleyway um, bleeding from a wound um, and she kind of approaches him and he warns her to uh, stay away that he's not the sort of man that you would want to kind of try and help um, but she doesn't take no for an answer and she um, she ends up taking him to the veterinary clinic because he refuses to go to a hospital and she kind of patches him up and they have this really really kind of like intimate moment together um, they get really kind of like close and he's very very fascinated with her as a person and then this kind of really starts an obsession that he has with her and starts to stalk her um, and watch her and even um, ends up injuring himself deliberately in the future so he's got a reason to go back. Now they know they shouldn't be together this is sort of a bit of forbidden romance as well um, but they can't help it until eventually you know they kind of succumb to their feelings for each other and end up sleeping together. Now, he ends up having to go on another job um, and disappears and doesn't come back. Um, and this coincides with her finding out that she's pregnant and has no way to let him know. And a number of years pass. So this is quite heartbreaking because they are separated then for quite a number of years because he's uh, been captured during that mission. She has absolutely no idea where he's gone what's happened to him he could even be dead for all she knows meanwhile there's lots of political intrigue going on in her family the mafia organization she's in is in peril the person who's going to take charge and needs to take charge is currently in prison and he's not due out a prisoner for another six months and drastic action needs uh, to happen so she ends up being forced to marry another man um pass the baby off as his and really try and take control of this mafia organization uh, to for safekeeping until the person who needs to take over gets out of prison and so she is forced then to do some very terrible things make some very difficult decisions because she is essentially um in charge of this mafia organization in the interim um and um yeah in, in order to save her son basically and keep him safe she's forced to do a lot of terrible things um and then four years later like i say they're both very different people kai finally makes his way back um, and then obviously they're going to have to face what the time that they've missed the people that they've become figure out what's happened and see if they can move forward um, together as a couple I absolutely love this one um, and yeah would highly recommend okay so going from something quite sad and dark in a way to something much more fun and light-hearted yes i'm going to call a mafia romance fun and light-hearted because i'm talking about brutal prince by sophie lark and this is book one in her Bur brutal birthright series again it's the only one i've read in this series but i absolutely want to uh, read more i love sophie lark's writing and i absolutely love this universe 
this was so much fun to read it really was like i say it isn't my favorite romance but it's enemies to lovers it's an arranged marriage situation and um it's a, an arranged marriage between the italian mafia and the irish mafia and we're following callum and ada now right at the start of this one these are this this is two rival families right they usually stay out of each other's way but they don't get on together at all as these two mafia families and um callum is having kind of like a party at his house or the family are having a party at, at the house um, and ada decides that she's going to go and cause some trouble with her brothers and they kind of like you know um party crash they they uh, crash this party um they know they shouldn't be there but they're having a good time um and she sneaks upstairs to the library and then hides when so she hears someone coming in of course callum's going to come into the library she's hiding um in her attempt to kind of conceal herself she ends up getting the curtains into the fire and setting fire to this library and then she escapes uh, but she also escapes with Callum's great grandfather's uh, pocket watch, which is, has high sentimental value to him. So, of course, he goes after her. Um, he attacks her brother. Uh, there's a bit of an altercation. And then this pocket watch ends up going into the ocean. And Callum is uh, livid, absolutely livid. And this causes quite a big rift, even bigger rift than there already was in this family. And they're literally on the brink of war. But their parents get together and say, look, this is a ridiculous reason for our families to go to war. Clearly, um, Ava has, uh, Ada has made a mistake um, and Callum has uh, gone one step too far. So they decide that they're going to arrange this couple to be married um, so that they have to then get on, but also to kind of mend the rift in this family. And of course, both Callum and Ada do not want this to happen at all. Um, but they're kind of like stuck with this. They're absolutely stuck with it. And um, it's really, really funny then because they then attempt to make each other's life an absolute misery. Um, everything from her trying to poison him with strawberries because he's allergic to strawberries um, and uh, making him wear a horrible suit and various other things and him retali retaliating in kind and making her life a bit of a misery as well and um, it just escalates basically but it's so much fun uh, so good and then of course when they finally have sex it's fantastic because who doesn't love a good bit of hate sex um, and um, yeah it's just like I say totally fun to read so I definitely recommend I've also been on a bit of a Sam Mariano kick recently and love some of her dark romances and I'd heard so much about her Mafia series um, that I decided I was going to pick up Accidental Witness which is book one in the Morelli family now we know Matteo Morelli is a completely unhinged uh, hero um, exactly uh, the type of hero that Sam Mariano writes and so I was very very intrigued going into this one just how wild and crazy this one was going to get now when I first read this I was a little bit underwhelmed um, because I was expecting M Matteo to be even crazier than he actually was actually also having read some of uh, Sam's more recent reads as well I really thought that he would be even more unhinged than he actually was however it's only book one of a series with several books in it where I believe that more is going to happen. We've not finished with Matteo's story and definitely I think more exciting things will happen. So I wanted to mention it in here because I think it's a really great start to what I think will be an absolutely fantastic series. Very intrigued to carry on and read more. I think it's only going to get more interesting as time goes on um, and definitely Matteo has the makings of quite some hero that's for sure. So this is an Italian mafia situation. Um, forced proximity and we're following Vince and Mia so Vince is actually Matteo's cousin he's part of the organization but of course he's very scared of Matteo everyone is basically he's in charge very controlling um, and everyone does exactly what they're supposed to do Vince is still in high school so he's um you know just getting into the lifestyle starting to do some um jobs for the organization but nothing too terrible but one night he goes with somebody else into this house um to you know meet out a bit of revenge or whatever send a message and then sets his house on fire and as he's leaving this house and um, he's spotted by mia who happens to be a neighbor um, and sees him coming out of the house and it also appears that she's recorded some of it on her phone as well so when vince spots her she attempts to hide 
Luckily, the other person who's with Vince doesn't actually see her, but Vince sees her, and the following day at school, he kind of threatens her and says, you know, you can't tell anyone what you saw. And she was like, absolutely not. I didn't see anything. Not interested in telling anyone. I know, I know who you are, who you're related to, and definitely not interested in causing any trouble. But Vince sort of takes a bit of a shine to her and then kind of starts to date her, and she kind of likes Vince as well, and they start to sort of see each other. Um, but Vince should know better because basically it's not going to be too long before Matteo finds out that he's seeing this girl, puts two and two together and has to make a choice about what he's going to do with her because Matteo first and foremost will do anything for his family, he doesn't want any loose ends and Mia is definitely a loose end. So what Matteo does is he kind of like takes her to his house, he threatens her um, and she promises that she's not going to tell anyone anything um, and basically Matteo makes a decision that she's going to want move into the family house so he can keep an eye on her but force Vince to basically be her permanent boyfriend and puts the pressure on Vince basically and says like you're you're responsible for this girl as long as you want to be with her and want to keep seeing her then I will let her live um, but basically as soon as you split up with her then she's a loose end that I'm going to tie up that is not where the trauma ends though and other things happen in this story and Matteo starts to really show his true colours not that we didn't already know them but you know we, we see we see more of what he's capable of doing and what he's prepared to do um, and so this book is about Vince and Mia but Matteo is definitely um, not going to be letting them have their HEA for too long and I'm sure as the series goes on we're going to see much more from Matteo and also this couple as well particularly Mia so like I said very intriguing start to a series um, very intrigued to read more um, and I'll let you know how I get on when I pick those up and then the last one I wanted to talk about today was Sinners Anonymous by Som Sketcher this is book one in the Sinners Anonymous series there's only currently two books out um, and I'm really intrigued to read the third book in particular. So although I really liked this one, I'm going to wait until more books have been written in the series before I carry on because I think the next one is um, a duet and then after that um, I think it's going to be another duet and like I say, I just want to make sure they're kind of all written before I, I kind of carry on with the series. In this one, we are following Rory and Angelo and essentially Angelo is kind of like a mafia heir. He's supposed to have inherited a um, you know an area of land if you like a, a small town along a coast uh, line it's supposed to I think it's supposed to be like a coastline in New England something like that and the idea is that three brothers um, went to uh, America they each had a plot of land that is kind of along the coastline or next to each other um, and two out of three of these plots of land are uh, ruled and looked after by you know uh, Angelo's uncles Angelo was supposed to then take possession of this third plot of land but he doesn't want anything to do with the mafia lifestyle and he's kind of left um left this bit of land essentially um and the other two uncles really really want to take ownership he's got some very valuable uh land some very valuable parts in particular he owns uh docks which they um you know would be very useful for smuggling in goods um, but like I say, Angelo was really, really not interested in um, the Mafia lifestyle and declined their requests at every term. Then we have Rory, and Rory is a local girl. Um, she um, has lived in the area all her life, and she really, really cares about the land in particular because her father lives um, kind of in this wooded area, but he's also suffering from dementia, and so she's very, very worried about what would happen to him if she moved him to a different location, and she really, really wants to present preserve this land and this woods and this this woods and this lake where he resides but the um the other two mafia families they're really sort of plotting to take over part of this land they plan on cutting down the trees and building a casino and so she goes to one of the mafia uncles to do a deal and says please don't chop down the land um i really really need you to preserve it and in return i will agree to marry you and really this uncle is much much older than her he isn't particularly nice or attractive and he really wants to take her as a bit of a trophy wife so she is now kind of engaged to this really really old guy and angelo ends up having to come back to town um for family reasons figures out what's going on and um then determines 
that he's going to kind of save Rory from his uncle um, and that may or may not mean he's going to have to take some claim back of the land um, and um, you know step up as the heir. One of the really unique aspects of this book which I really really did enjoy was the Sin Sinner's Anonymous part because what we find out that his father was obviously part of the mafia but he was also like a clergyman and ran this church and he would take people's confessions and sometimes they would confess some very dark things. Now, after his father passed away, they didn't want to hear confessions anymore. So they set up this telephone line um, where people could ring a number and leave their confessions online. And him and his brothers have been listening to these confessions. And when somebody confesses to something very, very dark, they decide whether or not they're going to take retribution uh, for the actions like, you know, like vigilantes, basically, and uh, will seek justice. Uh, where needed and um, I really really like that element and so there was a really kind of like good bit in here where Rory herself has actually been you know sharing her sins in this telephone box and she starts to really really panic then that not only are people going to find out what she's sinned about but that she's going to get into some quite serious trouble so like I said I, re I think thought it was a really unique part of this story and um, something a bit unusual that I hadn't read before and really did um, enjoy that. So there you go then, that's eight of my favourite Mafia romance reads for the first half of the year. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content from me and I'd love to hear from you about your favourite Mafia reads of the year so far. Pop those in the comments box down below and if you want to recommend any that you really want me to read so I can review them for you then also you can use my book recommendation form as well pop that in there and then that will um, be written on a bit of paper turn into a star and go into my TBR jar for a chance to be pulled out when I do my TBR video next time so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time bye and I'm going to kick off um, with uh, hands which is book four and then we're going to kick straight off with hands by s j, j and i'm going to kick straight off with hands which is oh, i can't even speak